My next guest has over 20 years of being in clinical practice among her many, many health designations. She is an eco-essentials consultant and an environmentalist. She joins us tonight armed with her latest Green Living book, Vibrational Cleaning. Please welcome the Honorable Dr. Sabina DeVita. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lana. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here with you. Um, always a pleasure with you. Okay, so let's get the ball rolling. How did you become evolved, involved in the Eco Green movement? Well, it was through my own personal issues, actually, many years ago. That'd be about 25 years ago mm -hmm. when I was experiencing multiple chemical sensitivities okay. and reacting to a whole host of, of chemical reactions. And that led me into actually studying them. Mm -hmm. and what was happening. So what type of reactions were you experiencing? Most of the reactions that I was experiencing at that time were actually disturbing to my brain mm -hmm. and uh, things like uh, lack of focus, concentration, mm -hmm. fatigue, uh, actually even to the point of not remembering. Wow. So it affected my memory and feeling moody. I mean, it was actually at a point where I would eat certain things or be exposed to certain chemicals and actually feel depressed. And, and that's not my nature. Sure, so like an hour before you wouldn't be depressed and Correct. being exposed to chemicals. Yes, and then all of a sudden just feel like it was just, oh, just so blue, just that real down, just not, not a nice world sure. feeling. Okay. It was that. Mm -hmm. And you discovered that to be what? Well, what I did was I started to discover, because I started to have other reactions, and they were the typical allergic reactions to hives, to itchy skin, to uh, red eyes, and you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and headaches. And so I investigated and found that going down the road of traditional allergists was not answering my question. Okay. I was not getting better. So that's where I started to do some research and found that I was actually having what was at that time, and it still is, uh -huh. brain reactions. Okay. And that, that's what I did my doctoral work in, is mm -hmm. in the area of psychology and the study of cerebral allergies. Interesting. So then did you start eliminating uh, chemical compounds, I guess, from Absolutely. Your house. I and, had to. And yes. you noticed an improvement in your Dramat cognitive functioning. Absolutely. Dramatic improvement. So, I mean, how often does this go diagnosed? I mean, my question would be if, if, if a person who feels depressed goes and sees a psychiatrist, um, are they going to be given a Prozac when really the question is, hey, why don't you remove that Javax in your house because that's what's causing an, a reaction in your brain. Is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. To give you an, another example, and that's a good example, I had yeah. an, uh, a gentleman, a client many years ago, who noticed that there was a pattern and he would use his aftershave during the week mm -hmm. going to the office and he would feel very depressed. Mm -hmm. And during the weekends, he would remove it, of course, not use the aftershave, and found that he was really just very, very well, just felt really quite, quite well, quite happy, etc. And he thought, well, maybe it's my job. Mm -hmm. But he says, I like my job. I said, listen, why don't you do a little experiment? Avoid any chemical sure. whatsoever, any fragrance, which he did. And within three days at work, no depression. Amazing. And it's as simple so, so. as that. What are some of the common, I guess, chemical well, compounds? Well, one of the chemical, two of them, two of them the would time. be formaldehyde, which is in all fragrances. Okay. And another one is triglosan. Is that in the hand sanitizer? That's in the hand those sanitizers. Those little bottles that everyone carries around? Yes, so yes. So we shouldn't be using those? Absolutely not. What should we be using? Well, we have some natural things that we can use instead, <laughs> which is why I investigated that. <laughs> so, What about fluoride? Fluoride is extremely toxic. And as you know, it's in our water system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's very disturbing to the brain. Matter of fact, during the 1990s, a scientist decided to identify in particular what did fluoride do to the brain. Mm -hmm. And what she discovered was that it penetrates and absorb and is absorbed by the pineal gland mm -hmm. specifically and the pineal gland has a very major role for the whole endocrine system mm -hmm. okay and sure. also for sleep cycles for the immune system and when I started to do investigate many of these chemicals what I noticed was that they are neurotoxins and they penetrate and disturb the functioning of the brain, particularly the pineal, mm -hmm. and the pineal is considered to be, as it was discovered by Rene Descartes in the 17th century, 
as the seat of the soul. Right, it's the pineal gland is our bridge, our gateway to the spirit world, right? It so, truly so is. So when we're inhaling and digesting chemical compounds, um, it's hardening or blocking us from connecting to the source. Abs it's shutting us down. It is, right. and that's the true, I would say the heart inspired reason why I wrote that book mm -hmm. is to awaken people mm -hmm. to what is happening with these chemicals and how it's literally shutting them down. Interesting, uh, in Windsor, Ontario, uh, earlier this year they actually stopped fluoride in the water because there was activists when they had a meeting that stood up and said we don't want fluoride in our uh, tap water anymore and some of the research that they cited was the link between fluoride and kidney damage but not only that fluoride lowers our IQ and I've actually read how some people refer to fluoride as a mild lobotomy. <laughs> That's very true. Is that a good way to put it? It is a very accurate way to put it. As a matter of fact, in my book I have some latest research that was done by some Harvard and believe it or not Chinese scientists that actually show amongst a group of a large group of children how it in fact lowers IQ. Mm -hmm. It lowers IQ. Mm -hmm. So for people at home, the pineal gland is perched between the two hemispheres of the brain. It releases hormones like melatonin, which is responsible for a biological clock. Um, it actually has characteristics like our eye. It has a lens cornea and retina, and it releases, uh, was it DMT? DMT. The neurotransmitter that shamans use, but they're not allowed to, but it actually helps them with vision quest. Yes, it does. Right? But our own body generates that. Correct. And it, it's what's responsible for our intuition and our psychic abilities and our connection to the source and all these chemicals are blocking that. So speak more. Well, yes. Well, what's happening, these chemicals are, are like I mentioned earlier, particularly with fluoride, mercury, yeah. and many others, are actually targeting the pineal because mm -hmm. they're absorbed by the pineal. And what happens is it calcifies the, ca the pineal and it atrophies. So it doesn't function to its greatest ability, obviously. And that literally impedes that psychic ability and the intuitive ability. Okay, I know you have some products here. How can we clean up our pineal? Well, one of, one of the ways, which is what I talk about in my book, is a group of essential oils. And the reason for essential oils, and this is actually a fact that most people don't know about, and that is that the brain, most of the brain neurotransmitters are actually located in the olfactory bulb, mm -hmm. which means our sense of smell. So when we're using anything that has a smell to it, it will literally be absorbed and of course penetrate the brain. So this is actually one of the oils that I utilize and talk about in my book. It's called Brain Power. And I simply add it to some water, okay. which I did earlier. And it's, so it's easy to do. It's just to drop in a few drops into the bottle of water and create a spritzer so it can be spritzed. If you'd like to be spritzed, mm -hmm. you'll have some brain power. That's the name of it. Well, the brain power has a combination of essential oils like sandalwood, frankincense, that cedarwood. Really nice. It's wonderful. And it specifically targets, due to the compounds in it, the brain and helps to chelate, cleanse the pineal in particular and also to activate. They have, uh, I was reading on your, one of your articles, sesqui I can't even pronounce it. Sesquiterpenes. Thank you. Yeah, so this, this particular blend is very high in sesquiterpenes, okay. which means it has the ability uh -huh. to go into the brain area, yeah. cross the blood-brain barrier as well, and deliver oxygen. So another little technique that I also, also often uh, suggest in my book is to take the oil, mm -hmm. just drop, of course, a few drops in the palm, of one's hand, take it, and you can do this over linens, nice. cloths, uh, your basically all of your 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 drawer, nightwear, etc., and so that you can smell it. Mm, very nice. I like and that. isn't that a wonderful way yes. to be <sighs> imbued? It smells much better than and to be activated. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly, much better, nice. and of course healthier. Yeah. And what this is doing mm -hmm. is it's helping to cleanse and to activate nice. the pineal gland. So we need to switch out our products. Uh, quickly, uh, last minute question, what does it mean to be a green leader? 
Great question. I believe very strongly it means to become educated, number one, mm -hmm. and know what is happening, what is really taking place with all of these chemicals, and take action to make a change in your home. Mm -hmm. So it's about health and the environment. It's really about being an environmental leader, mm -hmm. as well as a social being socially responsible. Sure. And you have a book launch tomorrow night? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you, I do. I have a book launch tomorrow night, and that's in Brampton, and it's on vibrational cleaning. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Dr. Sabina Davida. Always a pleasure with you. We'll be back more on Health Matters and Women's Leadership. Jack Canfield's formula for great leadership, E plus R equals O, events plus responses equals outcome. Every outcome you experience, either success or failure, is the result of how you have responded to an earlier event in your life.